Put my finger, got the game with the game with me. Bought my purple ticket, got some brain on it. Yes, your boy Crypto Blood, and welcome to another episode of my two Toshis. It's October 30th, 2019. Shout out again to my man Tech Geek out there on YouTube. Offset, Ric Flair Drip. What's going on, people? Hope you guys are doing well today. Welcome to another episode. Today, we are looking at uh, two articles that are pertaining to, actually three, but two of them are uh, related to Bitmain. It's a lot of drama going on over there. I talked about it. Uh, I think I tweeted it. At least I was talking to someone online about Jihan Wu and, and him uh, basically kicking the co-founder of Bitmain out. So a lot of drama there. In addition to that, they're looking to... Uh, do an IPO here in the States. This is not anything new. This is the second round, second go at it. First time they had a lot of issues. There's a lot of scrutiny behind their books and how they were doing their accounting and all that. They're going to try it again. They're seeking IPO with confidential SEC filing. I don't even, I didn't even know you could do that. <laughs> Man, this corrupt system. And also, this was tweeted out uh, yesterday about stablecoin adoption. How Dai is going to be inside of a Visa card now. Tether sees use in e-commerce as well. I've been telling you guys really since the proliferation of stablecoins. I mean, Tether's been there for a long time. I think ever since I remember being in crypto. But once you start seeing other cryptos or stablecoins hit the market. I started to really analyze this whole situation and the trend that was developing. I said then, this is early 2018, I said stable coins will be what is used on a day to day basis when it comes to e-commerce. People don't have a problem spending it because they know it's inflationary. There's no FOMO in holding and stacking those particular coins. So money velocity won't be an issue in that case either so we'll take a look at what they're talking about out of uh coin telegraph regarding this die and visa and before we get started i want to direct your attention to cryptoblood.io promo code for you guys halloween 19 if you want to sign up for the bitmex automated trading bots you can do that and save 15 percent this is going on until sunday so take advantage of that i reorganized the landing page for the bitmex algo so it's much more detailed um, easier to follow we've got the live charts for the algo for both ethereum and bitcoin uh, available so you can see them right on trading view different packages here and also we've got performance breakdown fully detailed performance breakdown up until september i'll be putting october out uh, in a day or two this equity curve is going to be <laughs> way higher we took a lot of gains off the table from the move up we caught both the move down and up in bitcoin and ethereum uh in october so if you want to see detailed reports on every month going all the way back to uh 18 when i started november 2018 you can check that out on the site as well cryptoblood.io and you can access it through the trading services menu item under crypto trading bot all right also moon lambo shop moonlambo.com if you need your apparel crypto related apparel check them out you can save 10 percent if you use the word crypto blood 10 at checkout let's get into this first article out of coindesk regarding Bitmain seeking a US IPO with confidential SEC filing. It says that Bitcoin's mining giant Bitmain is said to have confidentially filed for an IPO with the US Security and Exchange Commission. Sponsored by Deutsche Bank, the offering was filed with the SEC earlier this week before a recent management shakeup saw the ousting of Bitmain's co-founder and executive director. Bitmain will now undergo questioning by the SEC before, if allowed, submitting an F1, a certification required for foreign companies before listing in U.S. securities markets. It's not clear how much capital the firm is looking to raise through the public offering. Bitmain's U.S. IPO dreams follow a failed attempt to go public on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange in 2018. The mining giant's application lapsed in March of 2019 and was not refiled. Bitmain declined to comment on the lapsed application at the time to increase the firm's chance of a U.S. listing. Bitmain has also hired the former representative of NASDAQ China as a consultant. And uh, this is interesting because if the SEC allows them to go public, it just further, not like we needed any more proof, but just further illustrates how corrupt this system is. 
It's no reason for them to allow people to uh, invest in this Bitmain. You know, there's been rumors that they were having liquidity issues for many years in between 17 and 18 going into 19 actually we all know that ipos is the ultimate exit strategy one for the individuals who own who have equity in the company for them to just be able to cash out which is no no problem with that but many times there are other reasons why companies do ipos is to fill a funding gap you know they're underwater and so if you sell to the public you know you're able to keep things afloat and, and keep the ponzi scheme going so we'll see what happens here but man i'm telling you if the sec does that shame on them you guys let me know your thoughts and to further go into detail about this struggle inside of bitmain and jihan Wu kicking the co-founder out uh, looks like that a partial transcript of an internal meeting at bitmain on tuesday details a long-running power struggle that led to a sudden ousting of the co-founder the conflict between Zhang and fellow co-founder Jihan Wu came to head in December of 2018 as the company pursued a round of layoffs. In today's emergency meeting called by Wu, he admitted that the company has had a subpar 2019, exacerbating tensions among top executives. The abrupt dismissal of Zhang comes just a week after Bitmain filed for an IPO, an attempt in the U.S. that is. A transcript of the Bitmain staff meeting reveals an ugly power struggle inside the world's biggest Bitcoin mining maker that led to the abrupt ousting of the co-founder. Coindesk has obtained and verified a partial transcript from the hour-long meeting on Tuesday. In it, Jihan Wu, a co-founder of Bitmain who started the company with Zan in 2013, explained to all employees why he thought it was necessary to oust his longtime partner and former co-CEO. After stepping down from day-to-day -day management in 2018, Wu returned Tuesday as chairman of the company and executive director of the Beijing Bitmain subsidiary. He immediately made his presence felt. It goes on to say that 2019 hasn't been great for Bitmain, Wu said in Tuesday's internal meeting. He said, our mining equipment's market share is declining. Our mining pool's dominance is also declining. Indeed, Bitmain's major rival miner makers, including Canon, What's Miner, and Inno Silicon, have all been able to increase sales following the market boom this year. Meanwhile, BTC.com and Ampool, that's Bitmain's flagship mining pool, lost their longtime dominant positions to pooling, founded by former BTC.com creators and FT Pool. Pooling and FT Pool are currently the top two mining pools in the world based on the real time hash rate distribution. So, Wu had a problem with Zan and his uh, what he calls crazy ideas. Zane wanted to double down on basically on a company's artificial intelligence business, which was unrelated to Bitcoin mining. He probably should have AI is going to be huge. I don't know which is going to be bigger, to be honest with you, AI or blockchain. According to Wu, some of Zane's ideas included getting finance and accounting employees in Shenzhen to take up sales roles for AI products. So yeah, we'll have to see what happens with this whole Bitmain thing, but I don't know if you guys caught it. In the first article I read, guess who's underwriting this IPO? Deutsche Bank. <laughs> of all banks, Deutsche Bank is underwriting this Bitmain IPO. If it happens, if it even happens, I don't think it's going to happen, to be honest with you. Do you guys let me know your thoughts, though? We'll have that conversation in the comments below. And last article for today is about stable coins and them really infiltrating the whole e-commerce uh, arena, which definitely was going to happen one way or another. It says the Ethereum-based decentralized stablecoin DAI is now spendable where Visa MasterCards are accepted in leading stablecoin Tether is seen increasing use by e-commerce organizations. It says, according to a press release shared by Cointelegraph on October 29th, collaborative finance platform Together added DAI support to its platform. A spokesperson claimed that this is the first stablecoin added to the platform. As a result of the addition Together, users can now spend their DAI tokens like euros without fees anywhere where Visa is accepted with a dedicated card. Furthermore, Together will also enable DAI holders to buy and sell 13 cryptocurrencies without fees and send DAI to external addresses. The firm explains what it hopes to achieve with the adoption of crypto assets. 
to its platform. It says the addition of the DAI to Together's crypto catalog offers the possibility of operating with a cryptocurrency that's both decentralized and stable at the same time. It goes on to say that e-commerce picks up on Tether's USD as well. The chief technical officer over at Tether and crypto exchange Bitfinex told Cointelegraph that Tether is expanding to e-commerce organizations and claimed that Tether is an effective way to improve the speed of activity since it's faster than credit cards and traditional payment systems. He noted merchants need to have a stable coin in order to protect their business from volatility of other cryptocurrency assets such as Bitcoin. Tether is being widely used by merchants and e-commerce outfits, but as this is a new trend, we are still collecting and evaluating the data. This is in line with recent reports that USDT is gaining popularity as a payment method, with some analysts seeing it catching up with Bitcoin and Ethereum. Absolutely is, and honestly guys, as I've stated, I see Tether, other stable coins, superseding e-commerce transactions with bitcoin over bitcoin and ethereum in the next year and a half that soon i really do it just makes sense with that being said the article says the future of stablecoin use as means of payment is in danger given that the u.s state congress is considering a draft bill that claims all managed stablecoins must be seen as an investment contract and therefore as a security Wow, and Cointelegraph reported earlier today the German government announced the intention to forbid stablecoin adoption, declaring it will be ensured that stablecoins do not establish themselves as an alternative to state currencies and thus call into question the existence of monetary systems. Interesting. So uh, maybe they are not. I mean, I'll tell you this if uh, governments come out against stablecoins, it definitely won't gain any more adoption. Bitcoin won't be a direct threat, in my opinion, to what the fiat currencies are, are doing. It'll express itself as a failure to what they're doing, meaning the price of Bitcoin will go up over time. But Bitcoin is not a direct threat to what the central banks are doing and what power they're trying to keep. Right. Stable coins maybe most of them are are actually backed by uh physical fiat right the issue is if we start to see the proliferation of gen 2 stable coins and gen 2 stable coins are coins like sin token um zank these stable coins use um algorithms and and logic to keep the price of that coin stable <laughs> within a period like a two-day period and then it'll lockstep and go down or up. Those types of coins don't need any fiat currency backing it. That would be a direct threat for sure. Because now we don't need the fiat currencies that these central banks uh, create. If we don't need their currency, they're out of power. So we'll see what happens though. But that's interesting. Didn't think about it from that perspective as far as the government's attacking stable coins. Which they definitely can. And again this does show the unique use case for coins like bitcoin and litecoin and digibyte and all these other coins though they won't be used as stable coins or be used as spending they definitely can't be there's no one organization or person to go after unlike these stable coins if, if the government is want to shut down these stable coins they can go directly to uh, to circle they can go directly to bitfinex or ifinex the parent company they can pressure those organizations and and really bottleneck them so we'll see what happens you guys let me know your thoughts on that but that's pretty much it for today ladies and gents shout out again to tech geek out there on youtube for that song request offset rick flair drip Make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. And click that bell to be notified about unbiased crypto news reported by yours truly. Crypto blood. I'm out of here, people. Holla.